A special version of mathematical induction is what we call strong mathematical induction. Strong mathematical induction differs from, math, from math, the standard mathematical induction in the inductive step. So in this case, uh, in the pre, in, in, uh, it differs from mathematical induction, again, as I said, in the inductive step, where we now show not P of K implies P of K plus one, but we show that the conjunction of P of one, P of two, P of three, and P all the way to P of K implies P of K plus one. Then we can conclude that for all N P of N. Okay, so for as a reminder for for standard induction, the inductive step says that we show that P of K implies P of K plus one. This is for standard induction. Now for strong induction, we are saying that P of one and P of two, and all of all of them all the way to P of K implies P of K plus one. So this is the difference between the two. And of course, we can prove strong induction using standard induction. So once again, we are not introducing some new logic here. Strong induction is a special case of, of standard induction or, or vi and vice versa. So we can establish all of them in the same way. So I wanna show just a illustration of where strong induction can be helpful over standard induction. So here's a very important result or fundamental result in number theory, which that says that every, every number greater than one is either prime or can be written as the product of primes. Okay, so for example, if you look at the number two, it is prime. If you look at the number three, it is prime. If you look at the number four, it is not prime, but it can be written as a product of prime, which is two times two. Okay, so four is ti two times two, both of which are prime. Five is prime. Six is not prime, but it can be written as two times three, which basically says it's written as a product of prime. This is a fundamental theorem in number theory. And this is basically what, what says that the prime numbers, the prime numbers are the basic building blocks of all the, the integers or the natural numbers, right? So natural numbers and integers, they can always be written. Any number can be written as a product of primes. Because even if the number is prime by itself, then we can say it is a product of primes, which is that number by itself. So why is this true? Or how do we prove that this is true? Again, the base case here, please pay attention in this case here. The base case, we are saying that prove that if n is an integer greater than one. So the base case is not one, it's the first number greater than one here, which is n equal to. So we need to prove that n two is either prime or product, product of prime. Of course, two is prime, therefore P of two is true, okay? Because two is prime. So then the inductive step, inductive step, here we wanna assume that P of two and P of three and all the way to P of K is true. We wanna assume that this conjunction is true and we want to prove P of K plus one, okay? In other ones, we wanna prove, i.e. we want to prove that K plus one is either prime or a product of primes. Okay, there are two cases. So the first case here, let's assume if K plus one is prime, then p of k plus 1 is true, and we are done, right? Because we want to prove p of k of plus 1 is true. If k plus 1 is prime, then p of k plus 1 is a true statement. But if k, if k plus 1 is not prime, what does it mean for a number not to be prime? If it's not prime, then it can be written as a product of two numbers, right? So if 16 is not prime, it can be written as two times eight, okay? 90 is not prime, it can be written as three times 30 or 45 times two and so on. So if K plus one is not prime, then there exist two positive integers, let's say, uh, or natural numbers, X and Y, both are in natural numbers here, such that both of them are greater than or equal to two, and k plus one equals x times y, 
right? So if, a, if k plus 1 is not prime, then it's a product of two numbers, each of which is at least 2. Now, here's where the inductive hypothesis comes into the picture. So x is a number between 2 and k. y is a number between 2 and k. By the inductive hypothesis, by the inductive hypothesis, we know that p of x is true, which means that x is either prime or product of primes. Sorry. Or product of primes. And by the inductive hypothesis, we also know that p of y is true, because also it's a number smaller than, than k plus 1 and greater than or equal to 2. So y is also either prime or product of prime. Okay, so if x is prime and y is prime, then look at x times y, which is what k plus 1 is. If x is prime and y is prime, then k plus 1 is a product of prime, because it's product of x and y. If let's just look at the case where x is a product of primes, let's say x equals, assume x is a product of primes, and they are x1, x2 times xm. These are all primes. And suppose y is a product of prime, it's y1 times y2 times all the way to yl. Then in this case, k plus 1 is x1 times x2 times xm times y1, y2, all the way to yl. But look at what happens. K plus 1 is a product of all these numbers from x1 to xm and y1 to yl, all of which are prime. Therefore, k plus 1 is prime. So p of k plus 1 is true. And by strong mathematical induction, we conclude that this statement is true for every n greater than 1, which basically means every number greater than or equal to 2 can be written as product of primes or a prime itself. Okay. Here we needed the strong induction because when I looked at x and y, neither x nor y are the number before k plus 1. So neither of them is really k. Both of them are numbers between k and, and, and 2. And we need to make, an, make use of the fact that p of 2 and p of 3 and p of 4 all the way to p of k are true. We can do another example here. So suppose you we have we have a sequence of numbers that are defined what we call recursively. So here we define a number or values numbers in the sequence in terms of numbers before them. Okay. So I tell you that the first number in this sequence is one, a zero is one, the second number in the sequence, a one is one. But then after that I start defining them. The third element is two times the, the second element plus the first element. So if you look at this here, what it is saying, a0 is 1, a1 is 1, what is a2? a2, according to this formula here, is 2 times a1 plus a0. So 2 times 1 plus 1, it's 3. What is a3? It is 2 times a2 plus a1. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1, it's 7 and so on. This is what we call a recursive definition of the numbers. Instead of writing them explicitly one after the other, I can define, a, give a general formula that a of n is just 2 times a of n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. So we want to prove that a of n is odd. If you look at these numbers, odd, 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 and so on. We want to prove that this is odd actually for every n. So the base case here for look at it is for n greater than or equal to 1. So for the base case, we need to show for n equal 1. For n equal 1, a1 is 1, and it is odd. Therefore, p of 1 is true, right? Now, for 2, we also need to show it in terms of the base case here. For n equal to a2 is, we said it is 3, and it is odd. So p of 2 is true. Now I needed to show this because if I am making assumptions on p of 1 and p of 2 and so on, then p of 2 makes use of p of 1 and p of 0, but I'm not making any assumptions on a of 0. Therefore, I need to show 2 as well as part of the base case. So the inductive step 
inductive step here, let me assume that p of 1 and p of 2 all the way to p of k is true. And I want to show, prove that p of k plus 1 is true, right? So what is p of k plus 1? That we want to show that a sub k plus 1 is odd. But what a what is a of k sub uh, a sub k plus one? It is two times a k plus a k minus one, right? But we know by the inductive hypothesis that a sub k is odd, and a sub k minus one is odd. Now this is even because it's two times a number. This is even because it's two times a number. This is odd by the inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis says that p of k minus 1 is true, which basically means a sub k minus 1 is odd. So we have now a, a sub k plus 1 is even plus odd. If you look at two numbers, one is even, one is odd, their sum is odd. Therefore, p of k plus 1 is true. And by strong mathematical induction, we conclude that actually for every n greater than 1, p of n. Okay? So in this case, I want to emphasize once once more that the base case, we needed to, first, we needed to, to show that p of n is true for two values, n equal 1 and n equal 2 as well. Okay? For the inductive step, I assumed p of 1 and p of 2 all the way to p of k are, all of them are true. And now I need to show p of k plus 1. And we needed to use this, this uh, base uh, inductive hypothesis because a of k plus 1 is written in terms of a sub k and a sub k minus 1. But both of them, we can make assumption on them that they are, that, that, uh, they are odd. The last example I want to show is, is the following here. Imagine that I define a function similar to the previous one, but in terms of a0, a1, and so on. I'm writing it f of 1, f of 2, and so on. So imagine that I define this function f from the positive integers to the positive integers, so 1, 2, 3, and so on. And we define f of 1 equal 1, and f of n for larger numbers larger than, than 1, we define it recursively, that f of n is smaller, or we put, not defining it, but we are creating, saying its property is that f of n is smaller than 2 times f of the floor, of n divided by 2. So this notation here, n divided by 2, and these symbols is the floor. So divide n by 2 and round it down. So if n is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, the floor is 1. If n is 3, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, round it down becomes 1. Okay? And we want to prove that f of n is smaller than or equal to 2 times n times log n for n greater than or equal to 2. Once again here for the base case, I need to show it for two values. The first one is f of 2. I need to show it for 2. Again, we are looking at n greater than or equal to 2. So I need to show it for f of 2. But f of 2, by the property, by the, the fact that f of n is smaller than or equal to 2 times f of n over 2 plus 1, I know that this is smaller than or equal to f of 2 times f of the floor of 2 divided by 2 plus 1, but this one here is just 3, and 3 is smaller than or equal to 2 times 2 log 2 to the base 2, which is 4, right? So we are showing that f of 2, that p of 2 is true. So p of 2 is true because we showed that f of 2 is smaller than or equal to 2 times 2 log of 2. We need to show also f of 3, but f of p of 3, that it is true. But for p of 3, f of 3 is smaller than or equal to 2 times f of the floor of 3 divided by 2 plus 1. And this is as well 3. And 3 is smaller than or equal to 6 times log 3 to the base 2. Therefore, p of 3 is true as well. Okay, So 3 is smaller than 6 times log of 3 to the base 2 because log 3 to the base 2 is a number greater than 1 times 6. We get a number greater than 6 
therefore three is smaller than or equal to that. So this is the base case. We need to show it for both. If we didn't show it for, for f of three or p of three, then we will run into a problem. There, I want you to think about why it was necessary to think or to prove that f of three is smaller than or equal to three time, two times three times log of three. For the inductive step, for the inductive step, we need to assume that p of k, we assume that, assume, you know, p of 2 and p of 3 all the way to p of k, okay? What does this mean? And here we need to, we assume it for every k between 2 and n. And we need to show it, sorry, between greater than 2, sorry, greater than 2. And we want to show, prove p of k plus 1. So what is p of k plus 1? We are talking about f of k plus 1. We want to show that p of k, f of k plus 1, smaller than or equal to 2 times k plus 1 times log of k plus 1. But if k, f of k plus 1 is smaller than 2 times f of the floor of k plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. This is by the definition, right? This is by the properties of this function. This here is smaller than 2 times 2, the floor of k plus 1 divided by 2 log of k plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. Where does this come from? This comes from the inductive hypothesis. We assumed that for k plus 1 divided by 2 is a number smaller than or equal to k plus 1. And we assumed that we assumed that p of 2 and p of 3 and all the way to p of k are all true. So by inductive hypothesis, we have that 2 times f of that value plus 1 is smaller than what I just wrote here. Now this is smaller than 2 times 2 times k plus 1 divided by 2 times log of k plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. So what happened here? I just got rid of the floor. I replaced it by parentheses in a sense. But why is this true? Because if you think about it, if you think about it, the floor of any number is smaller than or equal to the number itself, right? So wherever I had the floor of k plus 1 divided by 2, I said, well, this is smaller than or equal to k plus 1 divided by 2. So I removed the floor and I replaced it by just the number itself. In other words, I removed the floor symbol. And if we, if we do that, and now basically what we got to is 2 times n plus 1, sorry, k plus 1, 2 times k plus 1, and times log of k plus 1 minus log of 2 and plus 1 here. Okay, where did this the minus come from? If log of a divided by b is log of a minus log of b. Okay, so we have now 2 times k plus 1, log of k plus 1 minus log of 2 plus 1. And this equals 2 times k plus 1 log k plus 1 minus 2 n plus 1 plus 1. Okay, This is smaller than or equal to 2 k plus 1 log k plus 1. Why? Because this number here is a positive, this number that I will circle in red, this is a positive number, and we have basically 2 times k plus 1 plus log of k plus 1 minus a positive number. Therefore, we get to a number smaller than 2 times k plus 1 times log of k plus 1. So we have established that p of k plus 1 is true, assuming that p of 2 and p of 3 all the way to p of k is true. So by strong mathematical induction, we have shown that p of n is true for every n.